There we go, okay, so we've got a bar swing, a bar of the 16th note bottom, a bar swing, a bar of the 8th note triplet bottom.
I'm concerned that this might glitch a lot because it's, it's got a lot of different subdivisions. We'll try, we'll try, but I. Mm. Leave the notation up there, but we'll do that just against a click.
the stuff. Right? As soon as you start to open it up, it's like, ow, that's, the, that's it. Just 16th notes of eighth note triplets, a lot of bass drum pickup notes. Sometimes he would play the phrase in the 16th note phrasing with, uh, you know, two snares, two bass drums. Sometimes he would play the, the eighth note triplet phrasings with, uh, you know, four, like a 16th note triplets, for instance, but four snares, two bass drums. So you would also alternate between single bass drums and double bass drums. Sixteenth note triplet. Um, yeah. So the next step will be to actually change the stickings. We will still explore the different subdivisions. We won't do the bass drum just yet. So this time we'll do the sixteenth notes as doubles, and the eighth, which is all right. And the eighth note triplets as doubles. That's where it can go a little bit hmm, funky. Okay, so we have. seconds and I'll write that out as well and I'll send you guys all the stuff. The same problem in the uh, first place, right? You've got that fill to play, you could play it as singles. But you can also of course and that's gonna create once again a different um I guess just a, a different way of thinking about the licks that then you can develop from that sticking, right? Because you're not gonna think um, so linearly, you know, and not, I don't refer to linear here as in linear drumming, but you know, when you're playing singles, everything is a little bit more mechanical, which is cool. That's why singles are good. That's what they are good for. Doubles, a bit more rolly, right? <laughs> The idea, so but the six, the, it's still exploring the sixteenth notes and, the, and then the triples, right? Mm -hmm. It's a great way to develop good double stroke roll control, like as well. So that's the other thing. Double sometimes people just go like fast, and then they. There's no rhythm to it, it's just a sound, right? These exercises really force us to, okay, hang on, I need to manipulate the rhythm within the sticking, so. One minute, and I'll put that up there on the screen again. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. Groupings of two over a subdivision that is in threes. It helps to see where the notes and the stickings line up, right? Because as you can see, you've got right, right, left, left. That second note of the double is the downbeat. Right? Last bar. And then right, right, left, left, right, right. So the same thing again, where the second note of the double is the one that lands on the downbeat. And that can be a bit strange at first if we're just used to thinking of doubles as groupings of four, right? That's a beat. In this case is not. This is a beat. And then this. Next beat. That's the next beat. Right? It's always shifting away from the downbeat. But that's why it's fun. <laughs> right? One and the two and the three and the four and the one. If I play a gas um, bass drum, that's a cool little coordination exercise. One and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the one. And 
We should perhaps try to do, because the 16th notes double, that's going to be fine, that's easy. Let's spend some more time on the bottom two bars. Just going from the swing into the 8th note triplets played as doubles, right? Uh, Thank you. 
So let's do what uh, we started doing there. So split the hands between the two drums there.
Okay, we can straight away try to use the two different surfaces. All right.
kind of illusion of free form, no rhythm, but it was there because he was just so good at manipulating the different subdivisions. He would just mix them. We are still, in a way, um, like portioning it very, in a very friendly way. One bar of each. He would just go like one beat of, of this, one beat of that, you know, half a beat. Like he, he would really just navigate them completely freely, giving that sensation that he was just playing like randomly. And it wasn't random at all. All right? Cool. The next step, we'll change the sticking again to paradigms. Same sort of divisions though. So the idea is to train the ear and to. Then, of course, then explore different ways of playing those subjects. If you feel like your left hand is wanting to play beat one, yes, it's supposed to, because you have. So, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll do the the sticking. Um, so you you would have right left right right left right left left right left right right left. Okay, I'll do the. I'll create another one for the pair of needles. Once again, the 16th notes will be easy, because that fits the parallel very nicely. The, the triplets, not so much, so. Okay. I'll do this real quick. As quickly as I can. My advice to, to, to you is, of course, try to rely on the muscle memory of the paradiddle. Don't try to overthink where the rights and lefts go. Just think of the subdivision instead. And just let the paradiddle be more of a yeah, muscle memory thing more than anything else. So you just you think, especially playing the eighth note triplets, right? So you, you want to think one and the two and the three and the four and the, and the exit. Because if you start keeping track or trying to keep track of the paradiddle, you're going to get lost as to where the one is. Okay? One thing that is kind of cool to explore, though, is when you apply, which again, it will be relying heavily on muscle memory, is to play those eighth note triplets of the paradiddle, um, still keeping the accents on the first of each four, which will create this displacement effect, right? You see there? Uh, so if I'm thinking one and the two and the three and the four and the one and the two and the three and the four and the one.
session is playing the real chords and uh, then you got that implied. Focus on the bottom two bars. So I'm just going from the one, two, three, and the four. And the four. Depends on. Yeah. In that case, it would be one and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. If if eight notes is, is the total amount, then one and a half. Twelve out of sixteen. Yes. Three quarters. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, no, no. We have no words on it. Three quarters of two. <laughs> Percent of sixteen is twelve. Okay. Any questions before we proceed? Great exercise to practice just on the pad, by the way. Whilst, uh, in fact, all of these, you can do a little routine out of this, where you keep a quarter note with the feet. But you're thinking always in eighth note triplets. And then you play one bar of singles, one bar of doubles, one bar of paradiddles. Or you can even make it two so the paradiddles resolve more nicely. So two bars of each, right? the bottom two bars ago with a click <laughs> oh, 
comes a little bit more naturally. You'll be able to hear how to solve problems. Uh, say you, you think of a lick or you hear one. Your hands will be more equipped or at least better equipped to figure it out basically based on all these exercises that we just feed different stickings into the system and different ways of orchestrating things and manipulating rhythms. Then the ear reacts much more accurately instead of what happens most of the time when people have only maybe one or two tools 
that being stickings or licks or subdivisions that they always go back to is that when they hear something they literally convert that something back to some to something else that is more approximate to what they know all of that also known as guessing so <laughs> they start guessing what the lick is right they make decisions by proxy it's like <sighs> And they literally think that that's what they're hearing. It's not even like, I know it's not, but I'll... Com no, the ear doesn't really take it in because there's nothing there. There's no linguistic structure to translate what they're hearing. So they just go by something that sounds like it. And it's, it's honestly what they think they're hearing. This is the, the actual problem is that. It's not just something that you're cheating or anything like that. You literally cannot hear the right lick just doesn't go in. It gets filtered by the lack of structure. So the more stickings you learn, then you hear something like, oh, I think that's a phlegm. You wouldn't know that if you didn't know what a phlegm was. You couldn't say that sentence in your mind, right? And I experienced that a million times when I, I'd be learning rudiments and, you know, and then I, I would hear a song that I, that I had heard, you know, hundreds of times. I'd be like, oh, hang on a second. Is that a plaster crawl? And you try it, because now you can do it. So then you go ahead and... That was a plaster crawl. Or, you know, when you hear that Motown lick, the classic Motown lick, right? And you hear that, you kind of try to... It never really sounds quite right, because you're only using the, the only tool you know, singles. And then one day, you learn the six-stroke roll. Learning that, like you just practice it over and over. You hear it? Hang on. This is the Motown lick. And you unlock it, not because you hear the lick and try to play, but because you finally taught yourself the word that belongs to that sentence. Same thing with these parts, right? You start to hear Alvin Jones much more, much more um, accurately. I hope after these four sessions of dissecting his concepts, really. We didn't really do any of his licks, so to speak. It's just concepts that he used to play the licks. Boom. And next month we've got linear drumming, part three. A lot of dentist appointments. <laughs> Family traveling from abroad, all sorts of things happening in the next four Sundays. <laughs> I've got all those things next month. Yeah, it's gonna be fun.